All right, let's get started, everybody. Um, welcome to uh, LabStar's webinar for uh, building your best lab. As all of you know, since you signed up, um, you can see that uh, we have Danny Sacker, who is going to be, we're going to be talking with him about how he runs his lab and his philosophies for that. Um, you know, the idea behind this webinar is that LabStar is very focused on trying to make our customers um, better business uh, people and have their labs operate even better. That's the whole goal of software. But generally speaking, we also support the idea that the dental lab industry as a whole, as we all grow, all of us should be improving in our operations and our thinking and our strategy. So we're really excited to present this to the LabStar community and to the greater dental laboratory community. Um, with me today, who's going to be interviewing Danny, we have Nick Azera. He is the CEO of DNS Consulting. Nick currently works with Danny, which is a good fortune for us because there's really good insight um, uh, from both of them. But of course, this is for Danny, but uh, Nick is able to ask all the right questions here. Also, Nick has a deep background in the lab industry. He's been working in labs very early on. He's been working with dental manufacturers. He understands the clinical environment very deeply. And he also has some great insight into how labs work with DSOs, which is definitely something for the future. Um, before we get to the webinar, I want to remind everybody that there's a Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. So if you mouse over it, it'll show. Feel free at any time to ask a question. Now, if we can't, we'll fold it into the conversation. Otherwise, we're going to have a um, Q&A session at the end, maybe the last 10 or 15 minutes, where we'll be able to answer all your questions. And Danny has insisted that you can ask the big questions and the focused operational questions. Any question's a good question. Um, and so now that brings us to Danny. Uh, we're Fortunate to have him here today. He runs a 60 person lab in Winter Park, Florida. Uh, it's growing, it's successful. Danny has a rich experience in the dental lab industry that starts with him at the age of 21, coming to the United States in search of education and opportunity. And with that, maybe Danny, we can sort of jump right in here. Um, what was it that brought you to America, first thing? Hello, everybody. Thank you for the invite, uh, Jeff. Thank you for that star. And um, yeah, basically, I came here to go to school and study dental technology. Uh, didn't know much about uh, the business, but um, a friend of mine uh, was going to school uh, for it. And uh, he told me it's uh, not that the schooling is not going to be that long. And uh, I got interested. And that's what happened. Uh, from day one, as soon as I arrived here, I went to school. Uh, I loved it from day one. Loved the smell of the burning wax and the acrylic. And we started with denture and by trims. And I mean, really, I, I fell in love with it from day one. So anyway, um, and I had a great career, you know, so far, you know, after so many years. That was in 82, 83 when I started uh, school. And uh, I've been loving it since. And I think I'll uh, stay involved with the lab business till the day I die. I would like to retire eventually, but I'm <laughs> much that I enjoy being here, you know, and talking to doctors and helping and training and um, uh, teaching and uh, bringing more business. So everybody has different ways of uh, building a lab, building businesses. Um, I did it. My way, I guess, because of my personality, everybody, you know, sees things differently. I'm going to talk about how I did it, and uh, hopefully it will help anybody. But I could say, too, that, uh, I mean, one hour is not going to be long enough for a lot of questions. So, I mean, I can, I, I'll be more than happy to give you guys uh, my phone number, my uh, email address, whatever, and uh, Nick can help with that. And uh, if anybody needs to call me in the future uh, or soon after the web webinar, I mean, that's fine. I'll answer any question the best I can. So, but thank you, Jeff. Yeah, I mean, uh, so uh, go ahead for the first question. Well, go ahead, Jeff. 
Well, so, you know, even what you're saying now is a great example of how you work with your team and that generosity and the effort you put into making other people successful. We're going to come back to that, but maybe let's start at the beginning. When you first came to the United States and you dived into your education, you also found a mentor, someone that really helped you get started. Can you tell me, tell us a little bit about that? Uh, uh, I mean, I was lucky to meet uh, my teacher in school, um, was a master dental technician, so he knew all aspects of dental technology, which I think is so important, and that's one of the building block, one of the main things that helped me uh, get where we, uh, where we are right now. And what I mean by that is... Um, uh, Right after I finished my program in school, they shut the schools down, like a lot of the schools are shutting down. There's not that many left in the United States anymore, which is so sad. And we'll talk about that maybe in the future, about the education and how much uh, it's needed. But um, so uh, I met this, uh, basically his name was John Herbert and uh, he passed away since. Uh, he was in his 60s when I was 21 years old. He was like a father figure to me. I didn't have any family here. I didn't. I barely spoke any English, to be honest with you. So I started. Uh, I went to school and met the guy, and I was there as late as I could be, with him walking and practicing and doing things. And right after they shut the school down, they closed the school, the program. He asked me if I would like to open a, a lab with him, and I'm like, yeah, why not? You know, I mean, that was a, you know, I mean, a great opportunity for me. And he wanted to do. Uh, partial frames because his son had the crown on a bridge lab and he didn't want to compete with his son basically. So I ended up starting learning how to do partial frames, which I love doing those, the engineering, the, 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 the artistry, the, the understanding, you know, of, of how to do a good frame. And, um, uh, and we did that for a couple of years, you know, partial frames and acrylic dentures and, uh, and so on. And then he wanted to retire, so he asked me to go work for his son if I wanted to do that and learn how to do crown and bridge. And, you know, being a ceramist, which in the in back of my mind, you know, most technicians want to be a ceramist, want to be a crown and bridge, more so than removable at the time. A uh, long time ago, I mean, really nobody wanted to get into removable. Now it's so critical, so important. We need it badly now. So that helped me having that base um, with removable, really, that helped me do better crown bridge, you know, understanding uh, contour, you know, any combination cases, attachment, uh, then the implant came in on the market strong, and then knowing all that, uh, that helped me advance quicker than some other people that didn't know removable. So I suggest to anybody that, depending, you know, if you are strictly crown and bridge and you want to branch out and you want to do more, that's something that I would spend some time uh, doing. That's what I did and learning as much as possible about removable. Now with the software, with the technology, it is so much easier, so much, uh, uh, you, can, you can really achieve big goals in a short period of time. Uh, I give the example like uh, last in uh, Chicago last year, uh, Lee Cobb, he's not a denture person, but he's making dentures now because of technology. And he said, I've never been a denture technician, but now I can do dentures that easily. So really anybody can do it. Um, and um, uh, so, yeah, that's, that's basically how I started. So John Herbert, my mentor, basically, um, I sat down with him and I spoke to him every day, you know, for hours at lunchtime, whatever, where I'm listening and listening to all those experiences that he has. Uh, and that's why I'm in, I enjoy that program because as a technician, I, I love listening to other people, their stories, their um, uh, uh, situations, and, and how do they do things. I mean, this is why I love going to classes and hands-on classes um, uh, because you meet so many great people and the instructors and so on. So uh, that's, that's really uh, helped me. me. Meeting that person was great help for me. Um, and Danny. Danny, when, when you, you know, the influence of your mentors obviously was very dramatic in your development. And does that, uh, did that two things, two questions, did that help establish what your 
kind of your the bar you set for quality now moving forward in your laboratory and also did it did it uh did it set some sort of a a path that you now uh, mentor others in your lab and the style that you mentor others now and the young talent definitely yeah because i mean like uh, i mean we talk a lot uh, nick and i i mean uh, i mean most labs most businesses forget about that. most businesses they say i'm you know i do great quality and you know nobody's gonna tell you oh uh, my quality is so bad in here but send me the send me some work i mean nobody's gonna say that but how do you judge where you are so to me the way i was able to uh, uh, determine what level what how am i doing you know i mean my work is it okay or not i mean by going to those hands-on classes meeting other great technicians and, and instructors I mean, John Herbert, my mentor, he sent me to Miami to see Bob Winter back in 84, 85. He was young, he didn't really, he had just started, but man, that opened my eyes big time. I mean, it's just like, wow, this, this guy is unbelievable. You know, the way he presented the lecture and all at the time, even what he did, the, the Ovid Pontic, I believe the portion butt joints. I mean, nobody was doing any of that stuff but before him. And uh, I was like so impressed, and that kind of, in my mind, I just man, uh, that's what I want to be. That's what I want to do. And and uh, so that you have, you need that. You need to look around. I have a friend of mine, believe it or not, he has a small lab. Uh, he doesn't have anybody around, and even technicians, employees, not, he doesn't get to see other people what they do, how their work is. So it's hard to compare. And, and judge what, what do you do? I mean, am I doing well or do I push? So uh, to me, again, that worked for me. I mean, I wanted to uh, buy books and go see other people's work and uh, from Willie Geller to Yamamoto to, I mean, I'm talking about all the generation here, all the young uh, technician might not uh, have heard. And, and we went through so much, I mean, from uh, Renaissance crowns to Optech to Cirrus stores so to Dicord, Dicord Plus. You know, when you think of all those things that we did in the past and, and the different techniques that came in and the, all that builds more and more experience. And now we're enjoying zirconia and, and lithium disilicate and all the stuff that comes with it. But in the future, I mean, I'm looking at what's coming after that. I mean, how long are we going to stay with zirconia? and and where we're going from there, I mean, that is so interesting to me and, and, and uh, where the business, the industry is going. So I tell every young, that young technician or any technician, I mean, it's a great career and there's so much to, but you just have to put the effort of learning and, and being inquisitive and uh, always looking for better and better. I mean, so that's what I do with my employees. I send them to classes, I try to pay, I mean, we go to Chicago, I'll take care of that, you know, to the uh, uh, Florida lab meeting. We take as many people as we can and I take care of all the, just go and learn. I mean, I want them to experience what I experienced when I was young and, and open my eyes to, uh, uh, to so much. I mean, that's really, it's amazing, especially now more so than before. Uh, with all the technology, I mean, you could be a computer with and, and be happy there or just be an, an analog technician like me. I'm more analog than anything, but uh, so yeah, it's, it's so interesting. That, uh, you have some examples, Danny, of just what you, you know, how you communicate from the dentist side through the laboratory and then what the lab technician now is expected to understand that the, the doctor's going through. And I see you training on this every week. It, uh, it, it, it's uh, with our young, the young talent, any talent in the lab. Um, could you share with some of those tools that you use to help bridge that gap, uh, articulation, whatever tools that you use and you encourage doctors to send in and also for technicians to understand, right, and look for? Definitely. I mean, we start with, I mean, first managers, myself, and, and we, we like to join a lot of the study clubs around. Uh, from Spears to the Seattle Study Club to any study club that uh, you can join because you want to be with those doctors and specialists and listening to the same education, same information that they are listening to. And once they know that you are 
right there listening to the same information. Now they, they I mean, they gain respect and they, uh, you know what, you're, what they are talking about uh, more and more. So that's so important to me too, is uh, to join those study clubs. And then whatever you learn, you bring it, you want to tell everybody about what you learned. And um, so over the years, there's certain things that, I mean, for, Again, I like to share, I like to help. Uh, I have lots of lab owner friends that come to the lab here. We talk, we share, we show each other what we're doing and so on. I run it a little differently than lots of people. Maybe I understand, you know, in certain situation, you cannot do that. And I, I understand that, but myself, I was able to kind of open up and, and have lots of friends. I have four or five past lab owners that are working for me right now. And because uh, I was friend with them, they end up being here and, and that helps us grow too. But as far as um, when I find something that is simple, quick, and it's gonna make a difference, man, I jump on it. And uh, I don't know how many of the uh, uh, people out there, have, uh, they know about the COIS face analyzer. I assume a lot of you guys use the face analyzer, but that's a tool that I always, always tell the dentist, please, you have to buy it. And what we do is we buy them, we buy it from Panadent, we get discount, and I uh, give that discount to the doctors. My main concern is for them to have it. I want them to be able to have it so we can uh, help them and minimize remakes and resets and, and uh, correction and so on. So for me, I want to start right, and, and uh, I don't have a patient in the lab, right? So I have my articulator, and I use so many different kinds of articulator. What I like right now the best, everybody has their uh, choices and their like, liking, but I mean, I use, the stra I use the Stratos articulator, and the main reason is because it goes, the, the table that goes on it is well built. It's not that expensive, you know, $800 or so. But that face analyzer, uh, when we get the record from the dentist, that record goes on the articulator and that upper arch is mounted on the articulator exactly the way it is in the mouth. Most dentists don't want to do the face bows because it's hard, it's not easy, ears and screws and whatever, and it takes time. They try it once, twice, two, three times, and then they say, you know what, they don't, they stop using it. That analyzer uh, takes 30 seconds. Uh, just the bite restriction and you put it against the upper arch and that's the one I'm talking about and if anybody wants to again question me I, again I don't make those that's better than company I don't gain I mean, I'm, it's just a good tool that I like to share with everybody dentists and I like to to use it because it just helps so much and all what it is is basically the facial midline and the positioning of the upper arch if there's a cant the midline off that's how exactly how the upper model is going to go on the articulator. What that did for us, every time I sit down with a dentist and I go through that explanation, they are like, wow, you know, I mean, I didn't, I didn't know about this. And, and, and they understand the logic behind it. Immediately, I capture their attention and they want to start using us. Uh, I mean, really, it, it never fails. And that's something, a tool that you could take to any dentist that you would like to work with. And, but first you have to use it yourself, try it, see, understand it. It's a simple thing to do, but really it, it just help uh, minimize remakes and reset and, and uh, get the quality of your work. If somebody has a little can and we don't mount the model on the articulator exactly the way it is in the mouth, you end up most likely you're gonna do the crowns, the bridges, veneers, whatever you're doing, denture, whatever it is, and you sometimes you're gonna have the same cat if you didn't position it correctly on that articulator. So that's one example of the things that we ad adopt and and we run with it. And uh, the other important thing that I was dealing with, the bigger the lab, the more. Uh, 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 it is not easy to keep track of things. So what we did is we bought an articulator for every technician. So every technician has an articulator on the bench, on their bench with their name on it. And basically it does not move. We calibrate, we bought the calibration kit and we calibrate all the articulator. 
So every one of them is so, I mean, exactly similar. And we calibrate even the doctor's uh, uh, articulators and we do it for free. We tell them, send us the articulator, we'll calibrate it and send it back to you the next day. Um, this way, whatever we're seeing, whatever we're looking at, they are seeing it too. They see exactly. So if there's a problem, we know what to do to solve that problem. If you don't know the problem, what where the problem is, how do you solve it? So th that that was a huge thing for us, really, to standard, standardize the, the articulation. So everything is mounted on a uh, stratus articulator, except a single crown and, and so on. But uh, to me, the success of the lab, I mean, I just want to, and I, I tell everybody, I mean, if I can, if, I, uh, if you want to really do well and do better and better, you want to separate yourself from everybody else somehow or the other. I mean, every lab in the whole world can do a single crown. Heck, every dentist can do a single crown now almost. I, I don't want to compete with everybody how, you know, for a single crown. What do I do to separate myself and provide something that, that not everybody's doing. And that's, uh, that's my idea in general, how to build a good business and, and uh, uh, people are gonna look for you because of certain things. So Danny? Um, it could be anything. I mean, it could be really anything that you, are, you like to do, you're, you're good at, and you are better than anybody else. So Danny, uh, we wanna come back to how you distinguish your lab. But uh, to come back to the way that you have standardized the articulation, sort of these the steps that you take to emphasize quality, you also ask for photos from your dentist, is that right? Yeah, big time, yeah. I need photos. On, I don't care if it's a single crown, more or premolar, really, we have to have photos because even for shape, for surface texture, uh, we need to see what are we dealing with. If a doctor send me an A1, A2, uh, and not, not, not everybody's doing it, but at least I'm pushing for it. I'm pushing all the time. And the fact that I'm asking for it, they see that, and I tell them, I want to do better. I can do better, but give me the information I need so I can do better. So they see the passion. They see that we are trying at least. We're not like, we don't care. We, we want to do the best. And uh, so that's, that's really important. Photography is with the digital photography is so nice right now. I mean, I remember the time when the dentist and we were running to develop the films and it took two or three days right. to get prints. I mean, it is so easy now to take snap in a minute, snap any photos. Uh, I remember Polaroid even, honestly. I mean, I had a, a few dentists that were sending me Polaroid, believe it or not, but that's what we had before. And now it's so much, there's no reason. And I don't like, you know, I mean, the phones are fine, but I tell the dentist, and I say those things for a specific reason. I said, look, if you're, you're a young dentist, I mean, do the next three unit bridge and buy a nice, nice set of camera with flash, side flash, with the macro lens, SLR camera. And it's gonna be with you for years and years and years. So the three unit bridge that you're gonna do next time, it's gonna take you an hour or so to do it. That hour of work is going to allow you to have a very nice setup camera and you're going to save thousands of dollars in, in remake and, and because you're going to give me good photography and so on. It would help immensely. So, uh, you know, all those things I try to push and push all the time, every day, you know, and, and, and uh, again, so I see the passion. Somebody listening to you, Danny, and hearing your passion, I certainly had that perception too. They, you know, they have, and, and also the standard procedures, articulation, the, a, you know, the analyzer, just standard pictures, and they get the, might get the illusion that you are analog, right? But what's your thoughts on digital, on, on digital workflow and digital, the investment in digital technology? You know, I, I know the answer to that question, but, uh, you know, maybe you could share some thoughts with, yeah, with folks here. We, we started, um, uh, when I first, be, uh, you know, 12, 13 years ago, when I saw the first zirconia pretal bridge screw retained to the implant, I mean, I was like, wow, who did that? How was it done? I want to do it. And, and that's another thing, you know, when I see something so good, so nice, 
uh, man, you're giving people their teeth so close to nature and solid and, and that's not going to break and wear and so on, like, like the old acrylic hybrid we were doing. I'm like, I was amazed and I wanted to see. So luckily, uh, the owner of Zirconzan, that was the first company that started that Zirconia Skuritain Bridges. Uh, I know Enrico Steger 14, 15 years ago. I met him at the hands-on class. Great guy, great uh, master ceramist, uh, great uh, technician. So when I learned that he started doing those um, milling machines, the first CAD CAM that was able to mill those kind of cases, I just jumped on it. I mean, my wife was not happy for me to spend at the time $80,000 or plus, uh, really a small lab, uh, but I knew that I had to do it again to separate myself. I was the first, one, the second one in Florida. The first guy was an Italian guy that worked for Enrico. So this is why he got his first uh, system. I, I was the second, I believe. So, uh, but that helped us. And within two, three months, I realized that I need another uh, set of milling machine because if something happened to that machine, what am I going to do? Uh, everything was channeled through it. So yes, I'm big time analog until now, believe it or not. And that's what, that's an encouragement for other technicians. If they are not digitally much, I don't touch that stuff. I hire people that are smarter than I am, and savvy, and let them run with it. I mean, I don't have time to do any of that stuff. I, one of these days, I would love to get to it, but right now, I don't touch it but I can stand behind somebody designing and doing whatever, and I can point a few things in two or three minutes, and we can get whatever we need if they need my help uh, that way. Uh, but uh, uh, it was a 180 degree change. I mean, I tell everybody, anybody that is doing PFM still, which we still do on certain cases because you have to, because there's no room, the occlusal gingival clearance is so, uh, small and the long span. I mean, you have to do occlusal. You have to do certain things in metal still, but if there's any way I can avoid using metal in the lab, I'm, uh, you know, I, I'm always going the other way with zirconia or Emacs. So uh, that alone changed big time. And the money we saved in buying alloy, uh, really, I mean, I was able to pay for that system every month uh, not having to buy alloy because the time saving, the the, the manufacturing process, if I want to do a PFM, I tell people all the time, and I tell anybody now, I mean, it's, even if you're charging $250, $300 for a PFM or more, I would rather get $100 for a zirconia curl and I'll make more money this way because by the time I spend all the time to do a PFM, I can do five, six zirconia. And uh, labor, material is going to be a lot cheaper. I'll make more money sending a hundred dollar zirconia crown than a three hundred dollar PFM. And I explained to the dentist, and I've had some older dentists rejecting the idea of going to zirconia that used that have been used to PFM for so long. I offered, look, let me do two of them. I'll do a PFM and I'll do a zirconia, and let the patient pick, see which one. And, and really, I mean, most of them are going to change. I mean, in my experience, so right now, what we have maybe 95% or more uh, metal free. I mean, I just don't want to do metal because you cannot get enough money for the labor and the material involved to make a PFM uh, uh, crown. I mean, it just... So, and, Danny, um, yeah, one Jeff. quick programming note here for those who have joined us um, since we started. I want to uh, uh, just update you. We're talking with Danny Sacker, who's owner of Sacker Dental Arts in Winter Park, Florida. And we're talking about his approach and philosophy to building a successful dental lab. Um, and Nick, if I can jump in with a question about technology. Uh, Danny, when you purchase technology, and it sounds like you, you say, it looks like you consciously say, I want to get the best out there. And then you begin to integrate it into your lab. What is the process of sort of proving that the technology works? How long does that take? What do you do to introduce it into your lab so that you're, very quickly you're, you're 
fully utilizing it, or maybe not very quickly. Uh, uh, honestly, it it was very easy, very quickly for us. I mean, uh, I'm still amazed how the the, the, the zirconia how it's engineered to the uh, the way it's engineered so it fits the way it fits and so on. I mean, at least with my system, we have. 11, 12 milling machine right now. Uh, so many scanners, we have 3D printers, we have the two, two carbon uh, 3D printers. Uh, I have 2PM7 from Ivoplar that mills dentures, digital dentures, and of course, zirconia, PMMA, wax, whatever, I mean, even metal. So uh, there's really, uh, it's out there, that's, we have everything we could uh, do and to, uh, for, for me, I'm still amazed when I do a roundhouse, if, I, if we're doing a roundhouse or even a big zirconia over implant case, I mean, it has to be so passive, so accurate. And I'm amazed how it just drops every time we do one without any adjustment. So that, I, I mean, I was worried about it, but I was in Atlanta the first time to take the class to so be able to do those big uh, implant cases. I mean, that evening when I saw the bridge, the way it seated so passively on the model, I was like, oh my God, I, I just could not believe it. And uh, that alone proved to me that that technology works. And now, I mean, really we do tons of work every day. And uh, it's amazing that you don't have to touch it on the inside to mm -hmm. see, it just seats perfectly. So really, I mean, it's really the technology is so nice. So um, uh, there's so much, uh, that we can do, and, and uh, uh, I, I love it. Like I said, you know, and, and the sad part about it, because now you can produce so much more, the prices went down. That's the bad part about the technology. But because you can produce a lot, I mean, we're still doing very, very well. I mean, uh, we, we all wish the crowns were double the price that they are now, but we have to find a way with where we are to make as much money as we can. So. Danny, you mentioned, uh, had mentioned digital dentures, right, and some of the things that you were talking about, and I'm sure there's a lot of questions out there. Where are you with digital dentures in your thought process? Are you excited about digital dentures? Do you see the, the you have a vision of where they're going, Danny, in your mind? Uh, I mean, I, I, again, I love the technology, and anybody that um, really would love to see it, I mean, the, straight out of the milling machine, those dentures, they come out so nice, so smooth, very little uh, finishing, I mean, very little polishing. I mean, it's amazing, really. And what I like about it the most is the fact that now I don't have to buy a mold to fit that arch. I can make my own teeth. Uh, the right width, the right occlusion. If the occlusion is up and down, if I'm doing an upper denture against a lower arch that is not ideal, I mean, I can stretch, digitally stretch those teeth the way I want to, to get the right occlusion compared to how you do it with a regular denture where you have the teeth already made and you're trying to position them in the correct position. So there's so many advantages, you know. I mean, if somebody loses a denture, I can mill another one in a day. I can send that patient his denture, you know, send the doctor his denture. Uh, I mean, on and on and on, uh, really, it's just, uh, but the beautiful thing about it, the uh, uh, density of the material is not porous, it's stronger, it fits better. You don't even need a post dam on a loss of the uppers because it fits so well, there's no shrinkage. Um, so, I mean, I can talk a lot about uh, all the advantages of a, of a digital denture uh, and uh, you have, you have a, I mean, in and out, you can go analog and then you finish it in digital if you want, but you can start all the way from start to finish with digital too. So that uh, flexibility is, is uh, really uh, what draw me to that uh, system too uh, from Ivoclar. And I, I, I really enjoy it now. The only drawback right now to me is that it's taken three, three, Three hours, three, 50, three hours and 15 minutes to do a denture, mill a denture. So if you are, a, I mean, if you do a, quite a few dentures in a day, how many milling machines do you need uh, to be able to produce all those dentures uh, through a milling? Uh, so they just came out with a block that is going to save us some time because the teeth and the paint are in one block. Uh, very smartly engineered. It's amazing how they did that, but uh, 
So that's going to save us a little bit. We haven't tried it next week. We should be trying the first one, I think. But um, uh, no, I mean, I, I love it, really. I mean, uh, there's a lot of advantages to it. You know, all these philosophies on materials and your workflow and your vision for how to work with dentists and case design, all these things, you know, you, I see you working with technicians every day to try to pass on your vision to people. You know, uh, before I, I kind of had the uh, honor of working with you, there's a, a lot of over the shoulder, right? Every day, people coming up to you in and out to your top people working together to translate that. Now we're getting together every week, right? And, and reinforcing that with formal, formal trading where they're hearing your voice uninterrupted, looking at the work we're doing. You know, do you believe in that model, Danny, that that's helping us kind of get to a, a place faster with technicians yeah, and definitely. technicians development? You know, definitely. I mean, you're always fighting between, you know, I mean, we want to produce, we want to produce, you know, we want to, uh, but that training, you know, I mean, if I, I look at the in-house remake, because, you know, we, we need to have a certain quality. I mean, there's lots of cases where it's like, no, let's remake it. That's, it might not be strong enough, or we didn't build the connector. Instead of letting it go, I would dream of it. But those, that is a loss. I mean, all those in-house remake and so on. I mean, we need we we need to do better on minimizing all those remakes. And and every company, every business can do better and better in minimizing and wasting time and so on. So, but uh, to me, uh, having an hour of every Friday, like you're helping me with right now, and I'm so thankful for Nick to do a great job with all the photography and how he puts things together. Uh, I mean, I've been wanting to do that for the longest time and here now Nick is taking, I mean, helping me with that greatly. So uh, it's not a, an hour of waste. I mean, right now, yeah, we're not producing in that hour. I have 20 people, you know, just listening to that lecture, but uh, it's gonna make a huge, already it's making a huge difference after a few weeks of doing it. So sometimes you have to slow down a little bit to pick up speed or two, which is fine with us. I mean, I'm looking for the future. I want to be successful as a technician, as a business owner, but I want to see my, the people around me that help me get here as successful as I can. And, and they know it, they see it, you know, I mean, I hope they do. I mean, I know they do. But, they do. Uh, so I'm, um, you know, I mean, I don't run the business uh, and uh, some people might think I'm crazy to do what I do, but that's my personality and I, I don't, I cannot do it any other way. And uh, I'm not that rigid. I'm not that, um, um, uh, you know, I mean, so, but at the same time, I can ask anybody around me, can you be here uh, late tonight or on a week and come do something? They'll do anything for me because I'm, flexible and lenient and, and kind and whatever it is, you know, that's what, so, I mean, I, that's how I see it anyway. I mean, it's just. Uh, so, uh, so Danny, you also though, within that warmth and generosity, you have high expectations. Oh, definitely. definitely. How do you set those expectations? For example, uh, reducing remakes or Im improving a technique. What, what are the ways that you teach that? Yeah, I mean, honestly, I mean, I like numbers. I like, um, um, you know, I mean, th they see the disappointment on me because they know what I'm trying to look for and what, uh, I mean, we work with most prosthodontists in Central Florida. They send us our work with the great dentists in town. So, I mean, lots of people know we're, we're the lab and we're here and, and we have a certain quality that those doctors are expecting. And I have to meet, I, I cannot, I, I mean, we have to provide that to them. And uh, so they know my disappointment when I see something that is not up to par and nobody wants to disappoint you. And, and they try hard, you know, to their be the best of their ability. My job is to find the weaknesses. What do we need to work on? What was missed? Why did they miss it? And it could be, uh, system that they have to follow so they don't miss anything or it could be more training more knowledge i mean we're we have to hire people off the street now there's not that many schools left there's not many technicians left around and if you want to grow where do you get your people from so uh so i realize that we have to be the school too and and we have to teach and teach and teach and train mm -hmm. so, uh, so that's something that uh, they don't know we know better we know what's missing. Uh, 
they don't know to, <laughs> they, 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 you show them that look what uh, you haven't learned yet. And, and then they like, wow, wow. And they are so appreciative that you are caring for their knowledge, you know, for them to have a great career. Uh, it, it works, you know, I mean, it just worked for me anyway. I mean, it's... Uh, you know, uh, just to dovetail off that, Danny, here post uh, pre-COVID, right, you had this philosophy to grow your lab with a certain a vision of quality, a vision of the ch internal training, vision of uh, interacting with clients in a, in a way that you're trying to pull the best out of them, right, and now, and the investment in technology. Now, post-COVID, you know, would you say that you change your philosophy or you think you doubled down on your original philosophy? You know, what... what you, yeah, honestly, I mean, uh, no, I believe in it so much that uh, we're, we're doubling down. We're, keep, we're gonna keep going. I mean, there's so much need uh, for training, for technicians, for assistant, for dentists. I mean, all the young dentists, they need help. I mean, somebody needs to help them. Believe it or not, so, I mean, and it's kind of flattering and I don't believe it in a way, but quite a few dentists would say, we're learning more than what we learned from our professor. And I invite any dentist, please stop by the lab, come to the lab. You're gonna see every day in here more than what you see in three, four months. In one day, we get more cases, more units than the dentist gonna see in three, four months. We know what works and we know what doesn't work and we can take them straight to what works. And they are so appreciative when you do that to them. I mean, from removable to fix to anything. Um, so they need a lot of help and that training, uh, that's what every lab, in my opinion, I mean, if you focus on helping, 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 guess what? Nothing but good things going to come back at you. And uh, I, I mean, uh, uh, two months ago, I was sitting here in my room and I had four dentists sitting right next to me discussing cases and working on things. I mean, uh, it's just amazing, you know, I mean, it's just fun and, and um, uh, it's quite a compliment, you know, and they respect you. Uh, so that respect, I mean, you feel so good that you're helping, you're part of their team uh, big time. I mean, we are as important as anybody. I mean, that's how we feel anyway. Uh, they tell us that. Uh, so uh, it's, it's good. It's fun. It's been really good. It's, it's been really fun to watch. Go ahead, Jeff. Uh, Danny, one of the, is there sort of a set idea in your head of how much time get set aside for training. In our previous conversations, you talked about the idea of performing versus practicing. How does it, how do you reach that balance? Yeah, I mean, I tell everybody in here, like the, uh, most people that have a key for the lab. And again, I'm not telling every lab owner should do that. In my lab with my people, I mean, most people have the key that can come in. I tell them, use my equipment, use my material, just, practice, learn. Uh, Bob Winter himself, Dr. Winter told me, I mean, it's like most musicians, they practice all week and they play half an hour, an hour in a concert, if that. But they are practicing, practicing, practicing to, to, to perform for that little short time. It seems like we're always performing, we're under the gun, we're performing, we're not practicing. So yeah, to me, I, I really see that now, we can say we're, as we're doing it, we're practicing, uh, yes, it's true. And, and uh, one thing I, I say about that is that I ask the dentist to send us photos of our work in the mouth. So when I when we do a case in here and we send it to the dentist, please send us photos of that case because I wanna, we want to see. We try to do something. It could be surface texture, translucency, line angles, whatever we did. What happened in the mouth? How does it look? How do I know what to do next time? To make improvement or do the same thing I did that time I did it because everything went, worked out well. If I don't see it, but you have to ask those dentists and please, and everybody's busy, I understand, everybody's running around, but at least when you ask for those things, they see that you are concerned, you want to do better, and that helps. So all those little things, you know, is what helped us. Uh, uh, we don't have a salesperson in here. I, I mean, that's something that mm. I'm not saying that you shouldn't have a salesperson. At, at my size lab, 60 people, most lab that size, they have two or three salespeople. We never, ever had a salesperson. It's all word of mouth. Uh, we, every week we get two or three calls or more new accounts calling. I mean, they were referred by somebody else and so on. 
So um, it's nice. I mean, it's really nice to be able to uh, be in that position. But again, there's certain things you're doing to get to that point. And again, I can discuss any of that stuff with anybody in the future. If mm -hmm. someone wants to call you again, I'm, I'm more than happy to help. So. Yeah, I know we wanted to leave some time for Q&A, Jeff, but uh, one bridge question. Danny, when you uh, just managing your business and here, you know, using the software platform from Jeff and kind of getting information, what are some of you, just your basic key indicators, you know, you're involved every day, I see you, yeah. and you're looking at doctors' reactions, you're looking at technicians, you're working personally on training, you're investing your time, but what do you look at as a, an indicator of your daily success or, or not? You know, what do you, what do you, what do you, what to in, on your dashboard? I mean, uh, I, I try to rely on uh, experts. I mean, I have a great CPA accountant I've been using for years. I trust him and he helps me because I'm a technician. I sit on the bench till even till now and I do a lot. So, you know, I mean, I, I love to, to work. I love to adjust. I love to, to train. So uh, I hired uh, my manager here, Emja. I mean, she is a uh, she worked in a lab as she was going to school. She has a, a great degree. She, she, she has a master in business administration. So she understands uh, the, the book business part of it. And then she understands the uh, lab business too. So, and, and she's getting better and better at that. Of course, the more practice, the more experience you have. So, uh, so uh, she takes care of a lot of those numbers and, and all the sheets and all the um, thing that she gives me, but to me, I look at the number. At what did we do today? Every day, I'm looking at well, how did we do? How did we do? And that alone, to me, is what uh, helping me make sure there's a target. Uh, I mean, I can share information as far as I mean, we're approaching the eight million mark. Uh, again, I started from zero. I didn't have a father that was had the lab. Uh, I didn't have anybody that uh, was in the business. I mean, if I did it, anybody can do it, really. I mean, I'm not that smart, but I mean, I'm driven. I work hard, I can tell you. I mean, I, I work a lot of hours, weekends, whatever. It took for years and years and years to get to that point. It was not easy. I'm not saying it is, but uh, it is so much fun to be able to say, wow, from zero to that, uh, it, it's a great, I've, I've, like I said, I enjoyed my career greatly. But those numbers, you know, the LabStar software we have, I mean, it is so critical. I mean, I remember days where I was writing invoices by hand on a on little sheet of paper. We didn't even have one computer. Uh, I went to school, whatever, I never touched a computer, you know, and, and I worked so much by the time I get home late at night, or I used to, I don't want to, uh, you know, sit down and learn about new stuff. I'm not a gadget person per se, even though, we have so much technology in here, more so than most people. But I'm personally, I'm not a gadget person, but I believe in the technology and I hire the people that can run it for me and, and run with it. So uh, that's how I did it. Uh, and, uh, but uh, so yeah, I mean, I, we, we love the software. Uh, I mean, there's so many little things. I know Ryan here, I talked to Jeff about every case we get, we take photos of everything that comes from the dentist. I want to track how many bikes, how many models, how many impressions, uh, parts, implant, whatever it is. So we take photos, everything is in, uh, in LabStar. We can go back and look at what we got from the dentist, what was sent out. I mean, there's so many things that you can do to track things uh, because when you have so many cases coming every day, there's thousands and thousands of pieces and parts that are coming every day and that are supposed to go back to the dentist. So, I mean, it's, it's quite challenging when you think about it, all the things that all lab owners and all businesses have to do, so. So, so Danny, I think we want to move to some Q&A. And yeah. um, as usual, we won't have enough time for all the questions. And, and please, everybody, send any questions you have in. Uh, the first question that I have here, which is an interesting one, because it goes right back to your previous comment about you started without computers and you really adopted technology quickly. Wouldn't it be nice if all dentists did the same thing, um, if they had computers too? Uh, but the question is, when did you move? What was it that moved you from a small lab to growing to a big lab? 
Well, you can point the, to certain factors. Yes. Very, very quickly, very easy is the CAD CAM milling machine, the system that we bought. I mean, that changed big time. So what mm -hmm. happened, again, I started early on very quickly. I know so that keep uh, more time for other questions, but most labs around me did not have any, any of those milling machines. So I was even helping a lot of my friends milling zirconia, bridges, crowns, whatever it is, because they didn't have it. There was, they had to send it somewhere. Uh, I'm talking about 10, 12 years ago. So the fact that we were able to do it here in town, uh, already we, we, we started growing. And that's why I realized very quickly that I needed a second and third machine and kept on buying more and more every year. So uh, uh, yeah, I mean, that zirconia. So it's material, the fact that material was invented for those machines to be able to mill it and work with it. I mean, they could do a machine, but if you don't have the material to use, I mean, it's just not gonna work. But it's, it's really that uh, engineering for the machines and material that helped us. I mean, I remember, I remember uh, vividly that first case, I called a prostodonist uh, and I said, you're not gonna believe this. I had a full mouth reconstruction and not one penny weight of metal was used on it, even though we had bridges, implant, uh, custom abutment, uh, all different kind of case, uh, single crowns, whatever. Everything was done in zirconia, not even a penny weight of metal. And I, uh, that was the first, I was like, wow, that, I, can't, I cannot believe we did that. And I called him and I told him that, and he was like amazed and the case went well and he loved it and so on. But I remember clearly that case where it was a huge shift, 180 degree shift from doing it the way we used to. I mean, a week later, we started going the other way. Um, completely different way of doing things. And, and it just snowballed from there. We started hiring more people, doing more work. That technology alone, I have prostodonists from Maryland, from around the country, you know, I mean, around the state. I mean, when before that, how, do, how would I know those people? Not having salespeople, not advertising. So the technology allowed us to do a lot more work from a wider area and we're thinking now to go nationwide, you know, just, you know, certain cases, we, we, you know, again, we, we can handle so much, we're already busy, but there's certain things that we like to do, we can do more of it. So, uh, uh, but uh, people would say, who, who does that stuff? And then they collect it to us. I mean, we, we didn't even do the selling. Other people told, this, that's where I get it from or whatever. So it's quite interesting, you know. Um, one more question, I think, before we begin to, to wrap. Do you have productivity goals for each technician? We don't, uh, which is not good. I wish we do. I mean, we try to keep talking about that and there's a certain amount of time. I'm always generous with time. I want quality first. I don't want to produce, produce, produce and not have the right, uh, um, uh, you know, the, the, what, what we're looking for. So. Uh, but I'm not saying that that's not a good thing to have. We should combine, we should uh, blend both the, 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 the production. I mean, we, we all understand we have to produce. I tell people all the time, I don't care what you're doing. If you're doing a table and you can do a table the whole month, I don't care how nice that table is going to be. Nobody's going to pay more than a certain amount of money and you're going to lose money at the end of it. So you have to do it very nice and very as many as possible. And uh, so we're always talking, we're always, but I'm always, uh, I tell them if most labs are giving somebody seven, eight minutes, 10 minutes to design a crown, I'm gonna give you a couple more minutes than, than anybody else, but just give me what I'm looking for. So as far as that, I'm always lenient and as far, uh, but just to make them understand. But at the same time, I'm looking at that number at the end of the day what did we do today? That certain amount of money that, or cases or unit that we have to do to pay the bills and have the right profit that we need to have. So I'm, I'm watching everything. I mean, I, even uh, talking, walking around, you know, I tell people all the time, I give you an example. I didn't realize it till I calculated the time. If I waste 10 minutes in the morning and 10 minutes in the, in the afternoon, that's two and a half, well, 2.1 week in a year wasted zero production even though you get paid for it so even if you waste just 10 minutes in the morning and 10 minutes in the afternoon so i'm watching all that stuff and i tell my employees that look 
I'm going to calculate in front of you and you tell me if that's good. You add two weeks to two weeks vacation to all the PTOs we have. I mean, that's a lot of days where we have zero production, but you're getting paid for them. So they understand that we have to go. We have to do a good job and do as many as possible. But I do not have a specific numbers where they have to do it. Uh, uh, th those are the things we're working on to really, because everybody's different too. And how do we help somebody that is not producing as much? We, we need to figure out why are they not producing much? What is lacking? And I do tell them if it's a scanner, not that fast enough, if it's a computer, if it's anything, let me know. I'll buy the equipment. The equipment at the end of the day is not that expensive compared to all the waste that you uh, can acquire if you waste, if you're not productive. So Danny, for growth and to, to happen, you talk about this explosion of growth for CAD CAM. Did you need Serona? Did you need ExoCAD? Did you need Zircon Did you need 3Shape? Do you need all these things today to expand at the rate you're expanding? Or could you have gone with one software? In general, you have to be uh, uh, open to anybody. I mean, depending in the beginning, if somebody has a Serona, so, so depending on the time, you know, now things are a little different, but at the time you have to have it if somebody has a, a Serona system. So yeah, I would say that you had to, I mean, I remember all the big labs, they had them on their brochures. I have, we have three shape, we have this, we have that, you know, all the, because they wanted to let everybody know that we could get any of those scans. I mean, if you didn't, uh, if you couldn't get uh, all of them, then yeah, you, you're going to miss out on things. So, but now things are changing. I mean, now uh, it is more open, most systems, most, uh, but again, I'm not the expert in the digital, you know, I can, uh, anybody that has a specific question, uh, we can uh, let them talk to somebody who is really into that uh, in the lab that can call me anytime, so. Okay, well, unfortunately, we're gonna have to draw our conversation to a close. This is Jeff, if you could, before yeah. you leave, make sure everybody knows. Uh, number one, great job on the last program. Jeff Hoffman did an amazing job. If anybody didn't see that program, it's online. Jeff Mon uh, uh, changed it. It's really terrific. He was unbelievably insightful. And then the passion that Danny brings today, I see it firsthand. Uh, it's uh, incredible to be around and hope everybody enjoyed it. But Jeff, you have some updates to share with some folks too. What's coming up? Yeah, we do. With Lab Start, it's the brief 20 second update. Uh, in Q4, we're going to be coming out with a new case entry, new case records, new remakes, and a bunch of other things within about the next month or so. It's already with our beta labs and they're testing it out. So we're excited about that. And before the end of the year, we will also have a completely new mobile app for labs, along with a few other new communication tools, uh, a new messaging and communication center, and also some notifications. So that's coming down the pipeline. Um, thank you, everybody. Uh, Danny, it is so fun to hear you talk about how you run your business. There's a, a emphasis on quality and team building. And, you know, in an industry that has so much pressure on it, you are such a, a, an outstanding example of how kindness can effectively manage a, a growing team. Um, you know, there's, there's ways to do this by uh, commanding respect and giving respect at the same time. And then also your use of technology. Um, it's not intimidating to you. It's just a tool to help you achieve your quality goals. Um, thank you for sharing all of that with us. And everybody, as Danny said, please reach out to us. We're happy to give you Danny's uh, communication, you know, whatever email, phone. Um, and Danny has generously offered to continue these conversations with anybody who wants them. Danny, thank you. Thank you for, invite, for the invite. And Nick, yeah. thank you. As usual, it's always fun to have these fascinating conversations. With no, you. Th thank you, Jeff, for putting everybody together and helping everybody along this path that we're all seeking, right? Continuous improvement. It's nice to hear uh, these lessons from all of us and share. Thank you, Jeff. Th D Danny, great job. Thank you very much. Everybody, Look forward to the next one. Have a great day. We'll see you in two weeks. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.